Hiya, you all right? I'm up and about early this morning. I've just dropped Amelia off at a course. I've been to Top Shops, got myself a bacon roll. And today I've got another Christmas cake. This one's from Cranston's, £14.50. So it's a bit on the dearer side, but I'm going to have this, have a cup of tea, and then I'm going to get that in the oven and we'll see what that one's like. It's a good bacon roll. Got all that bacon. So I'm going to enjoy this. Right then, let's get this box opened. Oh, opens easy enough. Show you. Just lifts off. Oh, it's quite nice. All the instructions are on the inside. Let's have a look. Got my big ball out ingredients so we've got a bag of flour a bag of sugar and a big bag of fruit on oh, this this one's got cherries in just add orange juice brandy rum or any other high alcohol such as whiskey or orange liqueur 225 grams of butter or margarine Never margarine, always butter. Come on, Cranstons, what are you doing? Don't put margarine in anything. Four medium eggs, 150 mils of milk. Well, we're going to have to stop this right here because I've only got 200 grams of butter. So I'm off to the shops. Hang on. I've just caught a glimpse. Soak in your fruit first. The fruit is soaked before being added to the cake to make it plump and juicy and to give the cake added flavour and richness. Traditionally, spirits such as brandy rum, blah, 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 but you can use Cointreau cherry brandy. If you'd rather not use alcohol than use orange juice or black tea, you need 150 mils. Soak the contents of the bag containing the fruit in 150 mils of your chosen for about 12 hours or overnight. Well, I wish that I knew that before. The, I wish the instructions were on the outside so that I could have seen that before I've decided to make it because I wanted to make it now but I have to soak the fruit yesterday let's soak the fruit then there's a lot of fruit and it's a good mix it's not just raisins and sultanas there's little bits of yeah, there's mixed peel in there. That's a lot of fruit. I'm going orange juice. I can't stand alcohol in cakes. So you do you. You could have actually, if that was just tied, you could have just opened the top, poured the juice in and retied it. Anyways, cover that over and we'll leave it alone. Right, let's have a look at this fruit. It's not been set in overnight, but it's had a good few hours. Let me just put this down. And while I've been waiting for the fruit to set, I finally finished my wonderful one pots edition. So I've sent that off to be put together. So that's coming, but how long has it been? So this has had about four hours soaking with the orange juice. So literally all that juice or most of it has soaked up. I don't have time to be waiting overnight. So that's good enough. Let's get this pinny on. It's cold where I sit. So I sit with my body warm on. What does this say? Oven's on 130, so it's a low oven. To make the cake, cake, sieve the flour and spices and almonds into a mixing bowl. This has been milled. My sieve's not going to help it at all. It's going straight in. In another bowl, beat together the eggs with 150 mils of milk. I'm not doing that either. It's all going in one bowl. There's no need for these extra bowls and cream this and sift that. There's no point. Four eggs. 
150 mils of milk goes in, 225 grams of butter goes in. I've just melted it in the microwave. Using a hand whisk, beat together the butter margarine with the brown sugar until light and fluffy. Gently stir in the flour mix and egg mix alternately, a little at a time. No, it's all going in, so this is the sugar. And that goes too, and then we'll whisk it up. I'm just going to put a light on, I feel in the dark. better it's a good mixture I'm impressed with that mixture should we taste the mixture I won't put my finger in because you'll twine that tastes nice in this goes it's a good looking mixture and there's a lot of it this is going to make a big cake fold it in like it says I'm going square tin for this one because it's easy to share it, you know, if you're going to give some of it away. So tip it out. It's heavy. So here it is. It looks great. There's plenty of fruit in there. It smells really nice. It says, where is it? Tip your finished cake mix into a prepared tin. Gently cover with a double layer of baking parchment with a 50 pence size hole cut out of the centre. I'm presuming that's to stop it burning on, or, you know, colouring too much. But that's the only parchment I've got left. So I'm wondering if a piece of foil over the top with a hole in the middle would do. That's what we're going to have to go with. There it is, ready for the oven. I'm a bit worried that that's going to stick. Bake your cake in the lowest shelf of the oven for three and a half to four hours. What time is it now? Half one, half two, half three, half four. I'm going out tonight. Potentially half five. Test to check the cake is completely cooked with a metal skewer. Insert into the middle. If clean, it's cooked. The cake should feel springy in the centre when lightly pressed. I'm a bit worried about that foil on the top. Let's check this cake. The instructions say three and a half to four hours. There's no way this cake's gonna take that long to cook. It's been in the oven two and a half hours. So let's stick a skewer in it and see if it's done. If this comes out clean, it's ready. Mm. Sometimes it's hard to tell with fruit. I think that's done. If it was in a smaller, deeper tin, it might take a little bit longer. But just goes to show, cooking times are just a guide. You've got to use your eye and you've got to check. So I'm going to let this cool down, cross my fingers and hope for the best. Oh, and I should say I abandoned the foil. I changed my mind and I took it off. There's no need to put foil or parchment on the top. The oven's so low, it's not going to burn. Right, moment of truth. Let's take it out the tin. It should, hang on, let's put a knife down the edge. Just to loosen it. And it should, fingers crossed, just lift. It's quite heavy. I wonder if I, if I tip it. There we go. That's better. Peel this off. Cooked, cooked, that's good. Not bad. I've had an idea because it's got orange in it. I'm going to brush it with some marmalade just to bring out the oranginess even more instead of decorating it because I don't have enough icing left. So a good tablespoon of marmalade. We don't want the shreds, so get shredless. I'll put it in the microwave to turn this to liquid. And we're just going to brush it, I suppose. We're just glazing it. It'll give it a nice shine. I mean, it'll be sticky. I've got a simple piece of ribbon to go around the middle and that's it. There we go, just gorgeous. 
Okay, let's try it. I'll cut it in half so that we can have a look at the middle. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? In fact, that looks gorgeous. That looks good, really good. Let's have a slice. Look at that. It smells gorgeous. It's light for all it's packed with fruit. Look at those big juicy cherries. It's packed with fruit, but because the fruit was soaked, it's moist. So it's light and it's moist. It's not as, although it is heavy, fruit cake is heavy, it's, it's not like a brick, it's not solid. cakey that's a good cake this is good mm. can you see the sponge it's packed with fruit but it's still spongy booze it up if you want to ice it you do you have a great day i shall see you soon definitely want to try Bye-bye.